Netflix. I I watched it like while I was in Utah. Oh, Karen's not here. They don't want to have the key organ going. And he's like, Where's the organ? God, you guys let them go somewhere? I'm good morning, good morning. Welcome, everybody. How are you doing this morning? Welcome to MC the Church of Pastor David. We are glad that you are here and to come together to worship the Lord uh, this morning. And uh, I, I just heard this morning, Stephen Cherry Morris was married 31 years. Woo! 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 We didn't think anybody would be able to be that long, so it's a miracle. How many believe in miracles? Amen. Hey, so let's stand together as we come together to worship the Lord and kneel and leave this description of Christ. Yeah, so we'll put the plant right here for the bad idea. I had to move it over there. Oh, 
Amen. Oh Jesus, we do thank you for your grace. Lord, we did not deserve it, but God, you are great. You came here to live the perfect life. To die a sinless death for us. And you are worthy of praise, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the light of the world, you step down into the darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that they, this heart of Hope of life, with you. Here 
Come let us adore the one who came for us. Glory in the highest, praise the name of Jesus, our King has come. Just think about the significance of that event. The significance of that event throughout history. For the sake of the world. And the significance of that for your personal life. Your kids, your grandkids, the generations before you and after you. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, we do it. Children, we know more. Hope is on the horizon. Weary world, behold your promised Messiah. Angels, let your song begin.
for you. That will be great if you don't want to miss that. <laughs> okay. Also, I'm pumped for next Sunday. Get to deal with the rest of the announcements, but so next Sunday uh, is is uh, it's a Christmas program Sunday. So our adults and some of our young people, our kids, are going to be performing. But it's also M and M Sunday. Peanuts. Everybody in attendance is M and M's, and this is a tradition from the very first Christmas that our church was born. And I'm sure it wasn't as expensive as it is now. But I want you to know the m and are in-house. They're in a secure facility, a secure, secure place on the surface. So we're ready for next week. And it's mostly keys in and m and I checked to make sure that's the way we're All right? So it's a uh, big go visit. What kind of state did you say? Tube state? What's a tube state? Kind of like a hot dog. <laughs> but it's not really. We're not having a hot dog. Okay, good. Yes, Christmas program is next week, so you should be here for that. If you have kids that are in our kids' class, you should be helping them with our songs. If you're like, what songs? <laughs> what well, makes you figure that out? And they have learned. They have been working on this since the week after um, Halloween. So they've been working on this in the classroom, but you can work on this at home as well. You can pick up your kids, um, especially the elementary age kids. You can definitely help them. Um, when you pick them up, ask them what their songs are. It should be on your take guide, all that good stuff, so you can work on that together. Um, Wednesday, December 18th, we have our all-family Christmas caroling at 5.30 p.m. Um, it's awesome. Every year we go and visit some people who just need to hear some awesome Christmas songs. We remind them that there's a church family that loves them. And so you can join us for that at 5.30. We're back for sure by church that evening. Um, but don't miss it. It's obviously free, and we like to invite the whole church to pile on the bus and cars and all kinds of stuff. You can just go and visit these families. So join us for that. Uh, then we'll have our regular Wednesday service that evening uh, for adults, young adults, youth, and kids. And uh, the trademark uh, students, that's our middle school, high school, young adults, they're having their Christmas party. Woo! Oh, you didn't put the right name? It's okay. Um, we're having our trademark student Christmas party. It's free. Dress to impress. Dinner is provided. All that good stuff. That's what I'm doing our regular service here mm-hmm. that night. Tuesday, Christmas Eve. Um, at 7 p.m., we have carols and candles that's right here in the house. And uh, we just sing some awesome songs. We have a kind of liturgy service going on, and we light candles. It's awesome. Don't worry, the fire preachers never uh, So we're good to go. Um, then Sunday, December 15th, 9 and 11, we have our Christmas coffee with the MCA pastoral staff. Uh, so you can come ready for that if you uh, so choose. Wednesday, there are like no dates on here, so I'm just saying days. Um, so Wednesday at 7 p.m. is every Wednesday. It's the Christmas experience. It continues. It's not like a one-night event only. You can join us every Wednesday for that um, for December. And then don't forget we're in the middle of My Heart, My Church campaign, which means we're asking everyone to give more to help cover some of the major expenses we have coming up and to serve more to help us grow and continue to serve the kingdom and we are called to do that. So please make sure you're fulfilling all the things you can into there. Um, break this up this week. We have our Tuesday prayer meeting at 8.30 a.m. And then Wednesday at MCA, we have um, our adults and adults and kids. Thursday, we do have Ladies Bible Study and Prayer at 9.15 a.m. And then Sunday, we're back here for services at 9 and 11. And the second service, the 11 a.m., we have Spanish translation. So if you can take advantage of that and know someone, someone else who could, please do. One more extra announcement before we get to the offering is the family guides are out. So make sure you're picking that up. And if you... Um, don't, they're in the kids' class, you go pick up your, your kids. But if your grandkids don't come here and you want to take one, you stop by the Connection Center, they'll set you up for that as well. Um, so you can utilize that and uh, enjoy that in the season. So get some information there. And uh, just we're creating some cool stuff for the Christmas season. Actually, this guy goes all the way up to Valentine's Day. So don't miss it. Grab one of those today. At this time, we receive our morning ties and offerings as the ushers make themselves the ladies. <laughs> Dear Lord, we do thank you how you bless and how you provide. We thank you that your word gives us um, knowledge of how we're supposed to steward it well. We pray that you would bless the offering. We pray that you would bless uh, all that is gifted today and the generosity of the hearts of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Uh, we are on Catechism question 49. If you with us this year, we've been working our way through the New City Catechism. And we have three left, four left, four left. Four left, four left. Four left. Four left. Four left. Four left. So we're making our way. Uh, the question is, where is Christ now? Christ rose bodily from the grave on the third day after his death and is seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling his kingdom and interceding for us until he returns to judge and renew the whole world. Uh, this is a powerful truth. It's one of my favorite truths. This guides me daily. Because uh, when we sing these songs about Jesus' birth, that wasn't the beginning of the middle of the kingdom. Right? When Jesus came, his kingdom came with him. He's ruling and reigning right now. Amen? And he's not establishing the kingdom and then reestablishing the kingdom and then fixing things again. His kingdom has come. And now we as Christians, that's why we pray that thy kingdom come. Every single day we live like Jesus is on his throne because he is. Amen? Amen? So we preach the gospel. We love our neighbors. We serve others well. We serve in our church. And we love our community because this is his kingdom now and forever. This is a powerful truth. And it's a powerful truth for Christmas. Which it fits really well because it's not just about a baby. It's about a baby who lived a perfect life, died in our place, <laughs> and rose again and is on the throne today. Uh, so let's say that answer together. Where is Christ now? Christ was bodily from the grave on the third day after his death, and is seated at the right hand of God, ruling his kingdom and interceding for us until he returns to judge and renew the whole world. chapter 9 uh, this morning. We are just so glad that you are here. If you have your bulletin page, you can turn it over. There's some fill in the blanks there uh, that you can do uh, uh, along the way. And uh, if you want to, or you can just do an airplane, do it on the YouTube. It's yours for you to do. But we'll fill in those blanks as we go uh, today as we talk about what his name uh, will be. Today we're going to talk about wonderful counsel. In the book of Isaiah, it is, is prophesied, it, 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 it's speaking of the things to come, it's speaking of the amazing truth. In fact, some people call the book of Isaiah the fifth gospel, uh, because there's so much there that leads us to Christ. And uh, chapter 9 is one of those uh, chapters in the book of Isaiah that is really leading us to our Savior, which is leading us to Christ. And, uh, and, and so it's an important part. But before that, the first several chapters before that, there's kind of this, this, this waiting, and he has visions of the Lord and what's coming, and the, the sign of Emmanuel that's going to come. And just in, in, in chapter 8, just a few verses before, you can read it at home, verse 11 uh, through 22 on your own, uh, it, 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 it kind of has this, this thought of fear God and wait for the Lord. When, when we're living in these times of uncertainty, I, I enjoy the, the, the video, uh, the Christmas experience we're showing on on Wednesday nights, so if you get a chance on Wednesday to come, we've kind of gone through the beginning, the time, we kind of got to marry, the folks got married. Now it's going to uh, just really uh, change direction a little bit, really lead us to uh, the Savior, and why our Savior is born, and really takes us through kind of some of the things that they were experiencing that day. Very powerful Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock when we come and be part of it. But, but there's kind of this, the, the, this thing in the, in, in the world that was happening then and happened. It is people that are, are many times not seeking God, but seeking man for the answer. We continue to see over and over again that people think that, that, that human beings, that mankind, is the solution to all the problems. And uh, they're the cause of the problems, not the solution. Right? And, and, and we can't continually looking to mankind, to humanity, to resolve the problem that's happening in the world. We're just going to continue in the cycle of sin. We're going to continue in the cycle because we're not God. We don't have it all together. 
And there's a sense of, listen, we need to be fearing God and waiting on the Lord. We need to be walking in this uh, revering God and honoring God and respecting God and, 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 and realize that He is a God that gives me my very breath every day. Amen? Yeah, so we have it this morning. That's good to hear. So, uh, uh, so, so we're in good company. So we need to be living in the fear of God. And then at the last part of, of, of chapter 8, verse 22, it says this. And they will look to the earth, but behold, distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish, and they will thrust into thick darkness. And there's this sense of there's, there's not hope in darkness. There's not a, a future in darkness. And, and it's just where people just, uh, when they're in this, this dark place, and, and speaking of this dark time, there's just this sense of uncertainty. But we're going to see in the next few verses that God has something better. Amen? That God has a plan for us. That God has joy for us. That God has so much increase for us that we can experience. So we need to, to live in the fear of God. And we need to wait for God and know that He's coming again. Amen? How many are looking for His return? Amen? Amen? But the awesome thing that we have different than in the time of Isaiah is that we do have the living home of Jesus Christ living with us. Amen? And he is here. And he, 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 we experience that. But let's look at this journey a little bit as, as we look at God's word. And our key verse uh, is in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, as we look through this series. It says this, For, un, uh, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Lord, I just ask your presence to be here with us today. Lord, I'm so thankful for your word that, that leads us and guides us. Lord, that takes us from darkness to light, that brings us on a journey in our day-to-day -day life, that even as we, we grow in an understanding of you, Lord, we're on this journey that leads us into a greater understanding of your life and your, your peace and your hope that is, is for all of us that are here today and for all of mankind. In Jesus' name we pray. I do want you to have to drop it back. So we look at verse 22 of chapter 8 of the darkness that comes, but then it begins in, 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 in chapter 9. It says this, But there will be no room for her who is in anguish. In the former time, lies in contempt in the land of Zubar, in the land of Nebuchadnezzar. But in the latter time, he has made a glorious way to the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. Continues, the people who walked in darkness have seen a what? A great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they buy the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, and the rod of his oppressor, you have broken on the day of vision. For every boot that is trampled, warrior in battle, tumult, and every garment rolled into blood, we burn as fuel on the fire. Run to us, is born. Uh, for to us a child is born, a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of the peace, there will be no end. Of the throne of David and over the kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from time forth and forevermore. The zeal, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The zeal of our mighty God, the power and the strength that comes from God. And we see this begin to unfold. There was a vision. There's a vision of hope. There's a vision of something greater. We're looking at these, these names. We're going to focus on those. But, but first we're going, to, we're, we're, we're going to walk through this beginning portion of, of chapter 9 as it leads up to verse 6. And then the first thing you can fill out on your handout is there is a need for a, a great life. There's a need for a great life. There's a need for darkness to be changed into light. Uh, many of you have, have lived in darkness, not only spiritually in your life, but there's been times, maybe, anybody in here afraid of darkness? All right, and there's several liars as well, but that's okay. 
and so <laughs> that, are, that are afraid of the dark. I particularly don't like the dark. I, I, I don't enjoy that. I like having a nightlight on. I can admit it. I enjoy that. I enjoy having to be able to see. And now that you get older, you enjoy it because you have a pathway when you get up during the night. How many of you like to have a nightlight for those reasons? All right. So, all right. The truth comes out. You don't, you, you, you're maybe not afraid of the dark, but you do like the light. And so there was a need for a great light. There was a, there's deep darkness in this time of uncertainty. And they were just walking and fearing God and waiting on the Lord. But there is hope for us. We understand, we need to understand that there is a great light for us as followers of Jesus Christ. The light that we have in Jesus Christ that re reveals and pushes back darkness. As I've said before and it's said over and over and it's a truth that the dark and light cannot occupy the same space. And so when we, we have this need for light, it's going to push back the darkness, the deep darkness. I, I mean, you read that verse 22, it almost sounds like 2019 and 2020 in the United States of America. And they will look to the earth, but behold, the stress and darkness and gloom and anguish will be thrust into thick darkness. I mean, when you look to the earth, when you look to mankind, when you look to what you can fulfill on your own, all you're going to get is more darkness. You're not going to get light. And we have this struggle in our humanity that people are more concerned about what man can do and not what God can do. But God is the only one that can bring the great light. God is the only one that's going to bring the next part that, that we see in these verses. And that's, you can fill this in, is increased joy. Increased joy. How many know there's... Need for a lot more joy in this world, <laughs> right? Uh, there, there's need for true happiness, true fulfillment that only comes from, from the presence of God. And I, I, I love this as, as, as we look at this in, in verse 3. For, for you have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they were glad when they divided the spoil. And there's this, this, this picture to me as I read this of this of this moment of, of listen, we're, we, all of a sudden it's all coming in. I, I, I wasn't a farmer, but I knew a farmer. And there's something, <laughs> everybody known a farmer, right? Uh, uh, there, there's something about, we have an old family farm. And, uh, and I've been to that family farm, but I've never done anything with the dirt. The most thing I've done at the family farm is pump the well that we go to every time that we're in, in Minnesota. And uh, in Minnesota, this is, Minnesota looks just like, you know, this in winter. That's the whole state of Minnesota right there. I don't know why those people live there, and I was so thankful. Mom and Dad, thank you so much for moving away from there <laughs> when I was a child. I really appreciate that. And, <laughs> and we would always go to the family farm, and, and Dad would tell us stories, and Mom would tell us stories, uh, and, and, and we would talk of the days, and there's always a well there, a good, faithful faithful well but you get this picture in the time of harvest of coming it's like we've done all the toil we've done all the work and now it's time to enjoy the spoils now it's time let's put it in modern terms now it's time to get the paycheck maybe you uh, gone together in, in, in business years ago uh, uh, we were we were in, in ministry and and uh, and we started off as really broke didn't have a lot of money we uh, we we bought a house we had a kid, and I took a 52% cut in pay to go into ministry all within three months of each other. And I tell you, I don't know how God did it or how he performed it and how it all happened, uh, but it all turned out, okay, Gabe was a little sick, but that's okay. He was part of the problem, but that's okay. We, we made it through, and, and, and God did good things. So one of the things we did, and uh, you may not know this, but I am an expert on Christmas trees. And one of the things we did to make extra money is we sold Christmas trees. And we had a Christmas tree lot for, for, for many years. And every uh, December we would set this up. And, and, and I remember the first time we are working and working and working. We spent all this money. We'd never done it before. Truckloads of trees were coming in. We were grunting them and hauling them. Of course, I was skinnier and stronger then. And, uh, <laughs> and truckloads were coming in. We're selling and selling. And then we sat down with our partners and we divided the spoils, and we were just shocked at how much we had gained from that event. And the Lord blessed it. 
and God supplied. And, and, and there's something about seeing. There's going to be this, this time of celebration. There's going to be this time of reaping. There's going to be this time of harvest that comes and the, and the joy that comes. And, 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 and maybe you can think back to when you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that, that moment you, you realize that, 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 that sin is not on your shoulders anymore, but it's been paid for. And that you are free and that Jesus died on the cross for you. There's this increased joy that comes. Listen, we need to live in those joy moments. We need to live with that joy every day of our life that God has promised and he's bringing forth. That's part of living in the fear of God and recognizing that we revere God is that he has promised joy for us. And so we live in that place of increased joy. And it continues on. And I, and, and, and I think of the, the words of, 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 of coming victory. You can fill that in. Coming victory. That, that, that the, the, the burden that was there and the yoke that was there it, it has been broken and it's been taken care of because Jesus is coming and there's a hope that's coming. And, and, and the next part is a child to be born, a Savior. And, and how awesome it is that, that God comes and, and through the prophet Isaiah, he introduces us and brings us to a place that there's going to be a child that is born. That the, the Savior and the increased joy and the victory and, and the promises are going to come through a little child. How crazy is that? How, how insane for that to think about. But, but as we look back now and as we stand on this side of it, we have the word of God. Oh, we see the truth that comes. It was born of a virgin. It, was, it, it, it came and it didn't come in a greatness as a king, but came humbly before the world. And so a child was born, a savior. Our savior, Jesus Christ. And then it comes in that verse 6 and says, For us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. And today I want to look at Jesus as our wonderful counselor. Jesus as our wonderful counselor. The counselor that he is. Now listen, in, in the original text, we didn't have punctuation and stuff. And so there's this thought of wonderful counselor that has kind of been put together. But it, 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 and we're going to look at it that way today. Wonderful counselor. But I want you to think, when we look at this word wonder in this portion of, of wonderful, in this portion of this text, it really has this thought of wonder. Not wonder bread, but wonder. Like, uh, uh, I, I, I'm amazed. Uh, part of the wonder goes back to the, 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 the journey of, uh, of Israel as, they, as the Red Sea was divided. There was a, a wonder that took place, a miracle that took place. The cloud of, 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 of fire in the, during the, at night and the cloud during the day. This is a, a place of wonder. This is experiencing God's miraculous wonder of who he is. And so when we need to think about that, we need to think about God and the miraculous part of who he is. When we think about a wonderful counselor, we think about the, the miraculous God, the miracle working God. And when I think about that, and you begin to put that together with that word, wonderful counselor, that the, the counselor that God is, is a miracle working God, and he works miracles on your behalf. Amen? How many have experienced a miracle in your life? Amen? Amen. God is good. Come on, let's give it up for our Savior today. Right? Many hands have experienced a miracle. I mean, I mean, look at Stephen Cherry Boyce. He's been married 31 years. That's a miracle. I know them. I've known them a long time, and it truly is a miracle. My wife and I have been married uh, longer than that. Just a sec. 34 years, 33 years, 35 years. Which is it? No comment. Thank you. That's why I love her. Been married a long time. My parents, have, how long have you guys been married? 66 years. That's a long time. When your kids start collecting Social Security, you know you're, <laughs> you know you're old. Amen. Now, God is good. I better stop. I want you to, 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 when you think about a wonderful counselor, I want you to think about the miraculous, miracle-working God. Think about the miracles that are performed that we see in God's Word. All those things behind that is behind the wonderful 
Counselor, the, the, the wonderful God, and his name will be Wonderful Counselor. And, and, and I want to talk about the wonder, but I also want to talk about what it is to be a counselor. I just put in Google for, for fun uh, what, what a counselor does, what a counselor does. I just said, what, what's, the, what's the job description of a counselor? Counseling is coll- collaborative effort between the counselor and the client. Professional counselors help clients identify goals and potential solutions to problems that cause emotional turmoil. Seek to improve communication and coping skills, strengthen self-esteem, and promote behavior change and optimal mental health. That's a good description. Pretty good. How many need that? How many need a counselor? (laughs) Right? You could also find out what a a camp counselor does, but we won't go to that. (laughs) Right? Someone is there. But, 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 but I, I need wise counsel. If I'm going to live in this world that we live in today that's full of focusing on mankind and humanity and focusing on accomplishing things on your own and doing it all by yourself, I need counsel. I need hope. I need direction. I need to identify goals. I need to understand that that God has a purpose for me, that I was created and designed for a purpose beyond myself, that he has something in store for me. But I need solutions in my life. I have plenty of questions. I need solutions. I need answers, and those answers can be found in the Word of God, the true counselor that is there. I need, I need problems with what I face in my life, and help, and I need counsel in, in, in marriage and in direction there. I need help with raising my children, especially my, my fourth child. I need, I, I need, I'm just joking, he's a great kid. I, I, I need, I need wisdom in dealing with my parents who are aging and getting older, right? So I need, I need wisdom in all these areas. I say these funny, but it's true, don't we? We need counsel, we need wisdom. And are we going to look at the way that humanity deals with it, in mankind, are we going to look at the way God deals with it? And am I going to look at things in dealing with my, with my, with my grandkid and with my kids in the, that with God's wisdom, or am I going to look at it from man's wisdom? I brought with me a chair today. This chair actually has great significance. Many of you have probably sat in this chair because it's a chair from my office. This chair is, has been gifted twice. Believe it or not, this chair was a gift to my parents, my dad especially. And I gave it to him when I went to plant him at Christian Assembly as a pastor. And I gave him these two chairs, and they're, they're over 25 years old. And uh, I usually sit on the other side of the desk. <laughs> and the reason they were significant, because as a young pastor and as a young man, I would spend many times at the opposite side of the desk where my dad would sit. Many times I remember as a young pastor and as a young father and a young husband that I would go in there and I would sit in that office and I would sit in in a different chair at the time and I would sit there and I would sit back. (laughs) Me and my dad were meeting the other day, talking over some stuff. And we both sat the same way. I realized I am exactly doing what my dad did. And so I pray for that I would be as wise and smart as my dad. But I would sit in that chair across from his desk. And I would sit there and he would give me wise counsel. There's something special about wise counsel. When I went to plant the church, I, Kirsten and I wanted to leave a gift to my to, to, to my dad as, as I was going to plant the church, and we bought a, a, a set of these chairs, and we put them there. And then when he retired and I came back seven and a half years later, uh, I don't know if he gave them to me or if he just left them in the office because he didn't want them anymore. But they're still there today. Some of you have sat there. But there's something about being in that place where I would just sit and I would just gleam from wisdom of years. From a man who has drank a lot more water than I have, has driven more miles, has talked to more people. There was something about that wise counsel that was so special and unique. And, and, and I appreciate it. 
And, and, and now uh, he sometimes sits in that chair and still counsels me, and it comes back the other way. So the chair is paying dividends coming back the other way. But we all need to sit in this place where we're receiving wise counsel. We all need to sit in this place where we're ready to acknowledge I need help. And I think some of us just focus on, I can do it myself, I can figure it out myself, but I need to be in the place that I need to recognize Jesus as my wonderful counselor. I need to recognize that He is available as a resource for me every moment of every day as the Holy Spirit leads and prompts me, that, that He guides me and leads me every moment of every day. And it, and it can do with my finances, it can do with my health, it can do with my, my, my behavior, it can do with things that are going on in my life, it can be legal things that happen, it can be all sorts of things. But there's something about wise counsel, and that wise counsel comes from our God. And we need to recognize that I need this wonderful counselor. I need the one who is being born. I need Jesus who is being born, who later died on the cross. I need his counsel. I need his wisdom. I need his direction. And I receive it from the word of God. I receive it from the preaching of the word of God. Some people say, Pastor, do you do do counseling here at the church? And we we do. I'm not the best counselor. I'll I'll give you that. I'm I'm like, you know... This is what it says, do it, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and, and just do it, and, and, and you need to, you know, so, you know, if you're doing something wrong, I simply say, well, stop it, you know, <laughs> that's my philosophy, just if you're doing something that you shouldn't do or, or isn't right, doesn't line up with God's word, I just say, stop it, can you say that with me, stop it, one more time, stop it, right, so you just got to stop it, stop doing it, right, it's not as easy as that. But, but, but sometimes my answer is, yeah, we have counseling every Sunday morning at 9-11. Every Sunday morning at 9-11, we come together into God's house. We're experiencing what Jesus designed for us to experience as a church. Because we come and we break open the bread of life and the word of God that brings and is just full of this wise counsel. The problem is, is people are struggling with wise counsel because they're struggling with the word of God. They're struggling with wise counsel because they're not walking and leading, being led by the Holy Spirit and guiding. And we have this wise counsel that's available to us. Later on in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 12 it says this. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, Jesus, The branch from his roots shall bear fruit, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This is available to us. We need to understand that there is wise counsel that's available to us, that he is here to to pour out to us, and if we would just take advantage of that counsel. Now, what happens if you're struggling with an issue, and you go to a counselor, and they give you advice, and then you don't do it, and you still continue? What's the point of the counsel? Right? So we need to understand this wonderful, this wonder, this miraculous, miracle-working counselor is available to us and it came through Jesus Christ. He says, listen, the world is going to be different. You walked in fear. You walked in darkness. You walked without hope. You walked without a future. But Jesus is coming and everything's changing. It's a whole new world, right? It's all going to be different than it's ever been before because of the presence of Jesus. Sorry, there's always a song in my mind running. It's, it's, it's a sad case. Anybody counsel me for that? All right. Stop it. I deserve that. (laughs) Were you the first one to say stop it? What? Bob Newhart said it first. Okay, thanks. All right. We'll have to show that sometime. All right. Proverbs 1.5. A wise man will hear and increase learning. A man of understanding will obtain wise counsel. See, if if we really want to stop it, if we really want to change, if we really want the presence of God and the spirits of God to be a part of who we are, we will hear and increase learning of who Jesus is. I heard a pastor once say 
over and over again. In fact, his congregation is probably sick of it. And he says all the time to his congregation, fall in love with Jesus. You don't know that guy, do you? <laughs> fall in love with Jesus. When you are falling in love with Jesus, you are here an increase in learning. Because you're falling in love with his word. You're falling in love with worship. Man, it was great to worship the Lord today. Right? That, that's part of the reason Jesus came. That's part of the wise counselor. That song we sang. Listen to the, to the words in that song. The second song we sang. Second song. For the unclean, the unholy, for the broken, the unworthy, you came. Jesus, you came. For the wounded and for the hurting, for the lost and the lonely, you came. Jesus, you came. For the outcast, the defeated, for the weary, for the weakest, you came. Jesus, you came. That's why he came. He came for us because that's who we are. We're broken and we're, we're hurting and we're, we're downcast, and we have, but we have Jesus. And so we walk in this marvelous light. We walk in this increased joy. We walk with, with, with this victory coming that only comes in Jesus Christ. And, and, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. If you want to be a person of understanding and you want your life changed and you want to stop it, you need to pursue the counsel of God. Psalms 33, 11 says... The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. See, we're not going to a wonderful counsel that next week it's going to be something different. And next Christmas it's going to be something different. It's something that's steady and sure and strong. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? That's our God. That's our God. That's who he is. And he loves us so much. And he cares for us. We just need to call upon him. We need to sit in the place that I'm ready to receive. I need to have an open heart and an open mind. If I go in closed and I'm set on the way I'm going to do things in my life, is not going to change? Let's go into this wonderful counselor. Two, two things I want to talk about today. First of all, number one, he understands your struggles. He understands your struggles. He understands your pain. He understands your hurt. He understands your difficulties, what you're going through, the challenges that you face uh, in your life. He understands those things, and he's a God who cares. I, I, I just kind of was just thinking about some of the things that we struggle with, and this is from a Christian perspective. It's kind of 10 things that many times people struggle with, and it, I compare myself way too often. I struggle. Another one was, I worry a, about a lot. <laughs> Any worriers in the place? Is this going to happen? Is this going to happen? We wring our hands. We wonder what in the world's going to happen. Uh, sometimes I don't feel like I'm good enough. So we worry about some of those things. I, I, I try to be perfect at everything. I try to do, I don't do that good at that. Uh, I, I, I care way too much about what other people think. Are, are we living our life to to please man and what everybody else thinks instead of living our life to please God. Uh, I can sometimes be a control freak. That's me. Sometimes I'm pretty selfish. Uh, I, I dwell on things. Uh, I, I, I can be impatient. Any impatient people here? You guys are just like, get the sermon over with. Let me get the last blank. Just let me fill in the last blank so I can go home. Okay. I expect way too much. It's like, why isn't this happening? Why isn't this changing? God is working. But listen, he understands your struggles. He understands your pain. He understands your hurt. He understands what you're facing in your life today. He isn't a God who's, who's distant and doesn't know. I think sometimes we, we, we remember the, the holiness of God, and that's great, but we forget that he was flesh. We forget what it says in Hebrews chapter uh, Hebrews chapter what, 4, verse 14. Sorry, I had to find it. Since we have a great high priest, many of you have heard this passage, some of you haven't, who has passed through the, the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then... 
with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help, to help in time of need. Jesus understands my struggles. Jesus was tempted in every way that we were tempted. He was fully God, fully flesh. He was tempted. You may think, well, God doesn't understand or no one understands. Well, you need to take a moment and you need to sit in the place that you're ready to listen to God. That you're ready to hear that when the word of God is, is read and the word of God is preached, that you're ready to receive. Talking about a soft heart. Talking about a mind that is ready for change. We're transformed by the way we think. Talking about opening things up to the, to the true God. We have confidence that we can draw near to the throne of grace. And I think sometimes we don't want to tell God our problems because we think, oh, what is he going to do? Is he going to zap me with lightning because my problem, I got myself in such a mess. I'm going to get yourself in a mess. I get myself in a mess. Right? But it's the throne of what? Grace. And mercy. And, and, and he's good counsel. Very few times when I sat in this chair in front of my dad's desk, in fact, none. Did he reach over and slap me? Well, that was dumb. No, he gave wise counsel. He spoke into my life, which shaped me and formed me. In the same way, I need this wonderful, wonderful, this miracle-working God. When you think you're in a situation that there's no hope, go to the wonderful counselor, because it's a wonder counselor. It's a miracle counselor. It's a counselor who's going to give you wisdom beyond anything you can understand. It's part of reading the Word of God. It's part of spending time in prayer. It's part of uh, just lifting up my heart of worship before God. Appreciating the text coming in on a regular basis. Those spending quiet time with God. It's spending time just listening to Him. Just let Him speak to your heart. It's time in, in his house. It's falling in love with him over and over again. John 1.14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. See, there's times, because my dad is human, that when I would sit in this chair, it wasn't always the best advice. Why? Not because he's not a good guy. Not because he didn't love me. Because he's human. He's not God. But when I would take wise counsel and I mix it with the Holy Spirit speaking and guiding and the Word of God directing my life, man, my life is transformed. See, I want to be in that place that I'm ready to listen. You know what's awesome? When you're in that place that you're ready to listen and your life is being transformed, then you're going to impact your kids. You're going to impact your, your spouse. You're going to impact your neighbor. Maybe not that one neighbor, but maybe the rest of them. Your co-worker. He understands your struggle. And number two, he cares for you. He cares for you. He's not a God that doesn't care. He's not going to yell at you, stop it! Just stop it! No, he cares. You know how God is going to communicate with you? He's going to communicate in a way that you're going to listen. He, he, he's going to reveal to you and teach you in ways that are different in ways that He communicates with me. Because He made each of us different. He made us unique, but He's a God who cares. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He will exalt you. That, and but many times people just focus on the second verse. Casting all your anxiety on Him. Why do we cast our anxiety on Him? Why do we cast our problems? Why do we go to Him? Because He cares for you. See, God ultimately wants what's best for me. For my life to give Him glory. For my life to, to be what He has called me to be. I can take all the wisdom and it's good to take wise counsel. I'm not saying that. But ultimately, your counsel comes from the Word of God, the power of God. 
the Holy Spirit, the helper that is within us, that we can communicate with every day, that you can communicate with on, when you're driving to work, that you can communicate when you're with, you're with your family, you can communicate all day long. He is available to us. You don't have to go to a certain place in a certain office to receive wise counsel. But He's available. He's available to you. He, he, he understands your struggle, and He cares for you. Last verse in John 14, 26 to 27. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. When you sit under the wonderful, the wonder, the miraculous, the powerful, the almighty counselor, your life will be changed. So when you come to the manger, you come to the cross, when you come to Jesus, you have a wonderful counselor that knows your struggles and cares for you completely. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you meet us right where we're at. Lord, that you love us so much that you made it possible that a holy God can even know our earthly struggles. The God of heaven can know what we face. Lord, you've been tempted in every way that we have. Lord, I pray for each one in this place today. As I pray, worship team, will you come? Lord, I, 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 I pray for those that need to, in a sense, sit in a chair. They need to sit in the chair, but they also need to listen. Lord, for the one that's struggling with, with pain today, physical pain. Lord, I pray that you would be their healer today. Lord, I pray that you would give them counsel with that physical pain. That you would give them wisdom and direction. Lord, for the one that's, that's hurting emotionally today. The one that's in a tough situation in a relationship or a marriage. The one that's struggling in their relationship with their children or their grandchildren. Lord, I'm, I'm thank, thankful you know our struggles and that you care. So Lord, I pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, will speak to each one in this place. For the one that needs wisdom with financial things. Lord, I pray that you would direct their steps, that you would give them wisdom in that area. And Lord, I pray for the one that doesn't know you as wonderful counselor. Lord, I pray that if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as Savior and Lord, or they've wandered away from your path, they've listened to the counsel of humanity and the counsel of this world, they've wandered from your care. Lord, I'm so thankful that when we turn around, you're right there. So, Lord, I pray for those who maybe haven't been listening in the way they should. Lord, would you be that miraculous counselor today? If you're here today, with every head bowed and every eye closed, and you need to make a recommitment or you need to receive Jesus for the first time, I want to pray for you today. Would you simply just raise your hand and I want to pray for you. I want to lift you up before our God today. Yes. 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 I'm going to say a simple prayer. I'm just going to ask everybody to repeat after me out loud. Dear Jesus, I invite you in my heart today to forgive my sins. I thank you that you are a wise counselor, that you are a mighty counselor. And I'm thankful that your word takes me on a path that I can receive forgiveness. Please forgive me of my sins and help me walk in your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for these folks today. If you're able, will you just lift your hands? I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray for each one in this place. 
Lord, would you fill them with your presence today? Lord, would you fill them with wisdom today? Would you fill them with your word today? Lord, would you be the lifter of their head? Would you be their encourager today? Lord, for the one that's struggling, maybe with a, an addiction or a bad habit, Lord, I pray that you would pour out your spirit and give them wisdom, direction, and counsel in their life. For the one that, that has this relationship that's going south and kooky, Lord, that you would just help them, Lord, that you would give them what to say, when to say, what not to say. Lord, that we would look to you, that, that counsel from from, from wise people around us is great, but Lord, ultimately it's your word, it's your spirit, it's your power, it's that time together that I have with you that ultimately I need to respond to. So Lord, I pray that we would sit in the place today to receive all that you have for us. Lord, I'm so thankful that you know our struggles and that you care for us. You are a loving God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're able, would you stand as we uh, end worshiping our Lord? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open. blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Thank you, Lord. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Sing it out, oh come. Oh come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. For
held the world of the treasure you found. Lord God, we do thank you. We thank you that you call us to you, that you call us to the altar. Lord, we thank you that you, your presence on this planet, God, reminds us how wonderful you are, how great a counselor you are, how you care for us in our struggles and our hurts. Lord, how we can seek you and find you, how we can open your word and know you. Lord, fill your people with comfort and strength this week. Fill them with an intense dependence upon you and your word. And Lord, may that free us. May that guide us to live this life of fullness that you've called us to. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. Go and sin no more. Sin is not my master. Have a great week.